Welcome back to Tetracan Super Monoblock. Today we're going to take apart the lower section of a Tascam 488 Mark II. Before we start, I do advise for safety reasons you have this unplugged while you're doing this. Most of this is pretty safe to touch, but where the main comes into the wall, if you were to touch both of the pins like so, while that was plugged in, you'd basically get a huge electric shock, potentially lethal. Best you just remove that altogether, and just as a matter of habit and principle, Stay away from the primary side of any internal transformer on a unit like this. Uh, you don't want to be touching that area. A lot of times when I'm taking apart the lower half of one of these sort of two half 90s task amps and I'm getting you to remove the sort of pitch control LED area first. Not so with this one. We've actually got two boards and a perpendicular joint board sitting on top of here before we can get at that. So the first one we're going to remove is this record and playback amplifier board here. I've said in other videos that this kind of joint where you've got little spring-loaded teeth here, they can be really hard uh, to put back. I haven't tried to put these ones back yet, so I might be okay, but I, I recently deconstructed a Porta 7 and I cannot get one of these to go back, like the little teeth in the joint have just stopped biting. So probably what I'm going to end up doing is desoldering the joint and actually wiring these wires directly into the, the PCB. For the sake of being complete, I'll, I'm just showing you that there's a plastic cap that comes off. Uh, if I just put that on like that, um, you would get flathead screwdriver to lift slightly. And then it would come off like that. If you can possibly get away with whatever you want to do without taking that out of there, then I would encourage you to do that instead. But that's how those two come off. In addition to that, we've got five screws. They're located here, 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 and here. I beg your pardon, six screws, because there's one here with a cable tie. If you remember, that's the one that was keeping all the cables coming from the magnetic heads of the cassette player in a previous video tidy. Once they're removed, this is going to lift up slightly, um, but it's still attached here by these two, three joints. So what you would do is, close to the joints, it's going to be quite stiff the first time you do it, just le lever that out with a flathead screwdriver. And at that point that will come away. You've then got the shielding between these two boards. I would write on that, mark which way's up, because you can get quite confused with these things. And below that is your DBX board. So the screws for that are here, 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 and here. Again, that'll tip up like that. You can just gently pry it, it won't come away from these joints. This joint board is connected to two joints here and two joints here. The ones up here, these black ones, um, you need to pry them away at the sides very slightly with a flathead screwdriver uh, before you can get them open. But these ones are the same type we worked with before. In that case, I would just push like that. This stage is quite close to the joint. And then it's going to come away. Well, this is saying power PCB. I mean, really, the power is coming from the transformer here. You know, it's coming in through the wall. Uh, we've got one of these def capacitors which is a sort of safety measure the switch primary coil turns it lower types of ac and then this is doing some regulation that's taking some of the wave out of the ac signal it's going through voltage regulators so you've got quite a flat dc signal that can be used by other parts of the circuit it's basically two connections um, the lower of these two connections besides the transformer that goes to this board and then um, it splits off to two different places on this board, but it's all connected to one socket up at the top there. The pitch control board, on this one you would have to desolder it to get it completely detached from this board. The way it's sitting there, so it's got a little bit of play. It's using screws like this um, with this longish shank, so that shank gives it a little bit of movement so that when the plastic cap on top there sits, you've got a little bit of wiggle. Um, all the other screws I've mentioned, by the way, are going into plastic mounting posts, so they're of a wide ferrule type and not too long. So, you know, they could be kind of little brass looking screws like that. At that point, that's going to lift out. Um, this earth point is going to there. 
you unscrew that and then that plate will come out. The way to get this detached so that this can come out is just to remove this red plug here. And that's the main way that the, the AC from the secondary coils of this transformer are getting to this power conditioning board. The screws we need to remove are here and here. This one is going through this earth. So that's, you know, we're just giving a ground connection from the base of these voltage regulators back to common ground, which I guess is this point here. And then we've got another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws there. Um, I don't recommend that you detach these from this plate because it will give you heat dissipation problems. Uh, at that point, what have I missed? Oh yeah, well you'd have to remove that common ground altogether. Um, note that that bolt that I just removed, and that's probably why I left it in, it's the only one of this size, so it's a thin, longish bolt, thin ferrule, so it's going into a metal plate that's under that transformer. And that leaves us with the transformer itself. Can be easier to remove the plastic cap from the power switch. You're going to have one metal screw. Obviously, all the screws are metal, but I mean uh, of the type that goes into metal going into the plate from above. And then you've got four thicker bolts going through the base of the cover for the transformer there. Once you remove all of them, and that comes out as well. Say this has been dropped and there's a crack in um, this board. I've shown problems like that before, then that's how you get access to that. Then all this could be deep cleaned. I think uh, that covers it. Um, while I've got this open, for most situations, unless you've got an electrical problem you're trying to locate and fix, really the only thing you'd be doing in here is you wouldn't be deconstructing anything and you'd be adjusting things on this board. All the calibration that could be comfortably done by a user who doesn't know that much about it can be done from this board. The board's annotated to let you know which trim pot does what. Um, so from this board you can set the frequency and the amplitude of bias signals, you can set the gain going to the record and the playback amplifiers, you can set the EQ of the playback amplifiers. I've demonstrated that in other videos, one in the 244, one in the 424 Mark III, same principles will apply except you're doing it eight times instead of four because it's an eight track recorder. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.